And in this video lecture, we will explore possible ways of getting your research published. There are five possible avenues of publication that we are going to look at. At academic conferences or professional associations, as a journal article, as a chapter in a book, as a book itself, and in cyberspace. Now let's begin with presenting your research at an academic conference. There are a number of professional and academic associations that run annual conferences. Many of them provide streams for graduate students to present their research and work in progress. It is a good idea to share your research at these conferences as it enables you to develop your ideas in new ways because your audience is so much better informed as they are your peers and academics in pretty much the same field as you. You also can gain real-time feedback on your work and ideas. Keep in mind that you are given at most from 20 to 30 minutes to present your paper, so you will need to summarize and condense your research. This simply means selecting the most significant information you wish to present. So what should you include? You should see your presentation as a type of verbal essay, so follow the basic structure of an essay. Focus on your introduction, the most important points in your discussion, and your conclusions and or recommendations. Depending on the requirements of that particular association, sometimes the entire paper is published in the conference's proceedings. Others will require that your paper be peer-reviewed and or your work condensed further before being published. Another way to present your research at a conference is by way of a poster presentation. Let's now look at getting your work published as a journal article. When writing for the journal, again you need to condense your information. It is best to have an outline prepared so that you know what information to include and what to delete. Writing for the journal requires a slightly different style from that of the thesis. Journal articles have organizational qualities of their own. Usually the pieces are shorter and the problem statement is merged with a literature review. The literature review is also more condensed. To start, select an appropriate journal to send your work to. It is no use sending a work on women's literature, for instance, to a journal dealing with business management. That is the easiest way of getting your work rejected. Having got this far in your research, you should be aware of the most applicable journals in your field which may be interested in your article. Once you have chosen a journal, initially send an abstract of your work to the editor. This allows you to see if your topic is in line with that journal's target audience. Find out also what other requirements, if any, your chosen journal requires. Keep in regular touch with the editor until you receive feedback. Editors are very busy people and your article could get lost among the many others they receive. If the editor asks you to send on your article, make absolutely sure that all grammatical, spelling, and other mechanical and structural composition details are those used in contemporary practice. If recommendations are made, as there most certainly will be, revise your work accordingly. When you submit your work to the journal, there are three possible outcomes. Your work is accepted with revisions, your work must be reviewed and resubmitted. Your work is rejected. If your work is accepted with revisions, congratulate yourself. Some fine tuning may be required, but it has been accepted for publication. If you are asked to review and resubmit, this translates into considering the reviewer's comments, 
then rewriting and resubmitting your work for reconsideration. This should also be taken as encouraging. As long as the comments do not compromise your article, consider them. But decide on the relevance of the comments. Often reviewers' comments will be contradictory. One reviewer may be positive, while another may not be so enthusiastic. If this happens, ask the journal editor for clarification about the reviewers' points, especially if you feel they did not quite understand your meaning. The third scenario that writers experience is rejection. This is also by far the experience of most submitters. This, however, does not necessarily mean that your work is bad. Two possible reasons for the rejection are that the journal was not the right one for your article, or another article similar to yours had already been accepted. Rejections are often the result of differences in judgment on the part of editors, rather than on a lack of merit of the article. But, whether the rejection is outright or conditional, you will be given the main reasons for the decision. Treat the rejection in the same way as you should treat failing an assignment at undergraduate level. Make it a learning experience. What did you do which you should avoid doing the next time you submit? View the rejection as constructive criticism and move on. Send your article to another journal. Do not stuff it at the back of your closet to be forgotten. Somewhere out there is a journal that is right for your topic. Just persevere. Remember this. Achieving publication depends largely on a superior job of putting together a well-composed, tightly organized manuscript and directing it to a periodical the style and publishing interest of which match with the article's content. Another possibility for publishing your research work would be as a chapter in a book. In terms of length, it is similar to the journal article, but it is written to fit the needs and requirements of the editor. So be clear as to what is expected of you. It may be easier to get a chapter accepted as a part of a book than getting an article published in a prestigious journal. But editors or publishers do often reject weak chapters in a collection. You may be required to substantially rewrite your work. It is thus important to do your best. Your reputation is also at stake as reviewers will draw attention to the poor chapters as well as the good ones. I think that one of the biggest challenges you may encounter with getting published as a chapter in a book is finding out what edited works are being prepared and where this is being done. You see, there are established networks in place, and breaking into these is where the challenge lies. A mentor who is securely entrenched in the appropriate academic networks can provide crucial guidance and instructions to help sell your contribution to the prospective editor or editors. The editor, in turn, can provide you with detailed guidelines and stylistic protocols for writing your contribution thereby making your job easier. Now, what about getting your thesis published as a book? Well, initially, send a query letter to the publisher. The query letter is like an abstract but contains more detail, which includes an outline structure of the proposed book, the intended market, other competing books in the market, and your sustainability to write such a book. You may also attach your research proposal with your letter and thus provide more information for the publisher to allow a better assessment to be made. If you attract the publisher's interest, you may be requested to send a sample chapter. 
it's good sense to have the bulk of your manuscript written before sending any kind of correspondence to a publisher. Be aware that your work must be rewritten as a book and not a thesis for a smaller, more specialized audience. What does this mean? The following are some general guidelines for rewriting. Reduce or eliminate the literature review. A summary or background discussion is more appropriate to establish a niche for your work. Secondly, reduce the number of levels of subdivision of sections. Instead, use the flow of the text to separate ideas. The style of the thesis chapters tends to be repetitious, so reduce the repetition of information. Critically assess your footnotes and remove any that do not add substance. Drop those that merely support reasonable assertions. Finally, rewrite for readability. This means using short, straightforward sentences with minimal and unnecessary jargon. Vigorous writing is concise. A sentence should contain no unnecessary words. A paragraph, no unnecessary sentences. For the same reason that a drawing should have no unnecessary lines. This requires not that the writer make all his sentences short, or that he avoid all detail and treat his subjects only in outline, but that every word tells. Finally, we look at getting your thesis onto cyberspace. There are two options to look at e-journals and websites. Let's first take a look at the e-journal. Follow the same process as when seeking publication in a conventional hard copy journal. The biggest advantage of an e-journal is that your work sees print sooner. But this fact should be balanced against the fact that few purely electronic journals carry as much kudos as conventional journals. It's probably better to send your article to conventional journals since many of them subsequently post electronic copies on websites once the hard copy has been printed. And what about websites? You can either attach your research to a university department's website, if it has one, or you can create your own website and place your research there. Both are easy to achieve. But in an academic sense, they don't really count as publishing because there has been no peer review of the content. Anyone can set up a website, and many do, and the assessment of the information is left up to the reader. So there you have it. We have looked at the five possible places where you might try and publish your work. These are at academic conferences or professional associations, as a journal article, as a chapter in a book, as a book itself, and on cyberspace. I hope this lecture has given you some ideas on how you can get your research published. I wish you all the best with your efforts.